is extremely proud of his Greek heritage. You could tell by the crowd's applause that Philippoussis is the man that they're pulling for here. And if you, in case you haven't seen Mark play, his ground strokes are very, very good. Man, as tall as he is, he likes to play from the baseline. Sutter is certainly the quicker of the two, and he can shift gears faster. I mean, there's 15. already the second point, Roger, staying back on that second serve, but turning around and taking Philippoussis' return, hitting it for a winner. Let's you didn't see Sampras do service. that at Wimbledon. First, second serve, he'd be coming in. You're going to see Mark do that. But Federer will mix it up. And I think that's going to make the match more exciting to watch. Thirty fifteen. Philippoussis has been in a final before, the 1998 U.S. Open, which he lost to fellow Aussie Pat Rafter. Oh! This Wimbledon, the first time Federer ever advanced past the quarters. It's nice to be 21. You can change direction so quickly. And here's Philippus is trying to dip that forehand for a winner. But see how fast Federer can stop, get himself ready, and this is just way too easy for him. Whoa! Federer's volley 14, was a good 13. one. Philippoussis guessed right. He just said, I'm just going to take a big old swing at this. Uh, almost hit Federer. Was hit so hard, so low over the net. Game Federer. But then the response from Federer is an ace, and he holds to begin the match. First game. Mark Philippoussis is wearing, again, tape around his ring finger, or excuse me, his index finger and his thumb on his left hand. And uh, it's been a big mystery here as to what is written on those fingers. And some Australian newspapers today are reporting that they are Greek words, Andros and Pothia, that translate into man of desires or man aspires. And I thought it was an old girlfriend. <laughs> Mark Philippus is to say. Pathio or Andros? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the old days, it could have been said Philippus' old girlfriend, Anna Kornikova. In the Miami She'll days. deny that. Philippus has got to the finals of the Open. He played a lot of tough matches. Miles. And you can see here, obviously, that match against Agus, Agassi, very, very difficult. Even Pop, Agassi helped Pop win those first two sets before Mark dug deep in that quarterfinal. I think he benefited then from Grosjean, who got flat mentally after his emotional win over Tim Henman. 30 love. And to his credit, Philippus was able to dismantle Grosjean in straight sets and you can see how dangerous he is with that serve 127 15 this is a ball he should have gotten to a little bit sooner and it got away from him his footwork was a a little careless there. Gave Federer one more chance. I think he thought Federer was going to give up on that point. Now here's an early sign, John, in his first service game. Philippus is hitting serves this way. 
125s, 127s against Grosjean in the semis. He didn't do that. Yeah, but he's so juiced up right now. Right. He's right. so pumped up, and he's probably having to slow himself down. But also to have had a full day off, to have had a three-set semifinal match is a sign that perhaps his, uh, his form could be stronger today. See, they've played on three separate occasions, and uh, surprisingly, Philippoussis has won the most recent one on clay. The two matches, one on hard court, one indoors. Federer came out on top. Fifteen love. He's such a classic motion, you know, it reminds you of someone who won here seven times, Sampras. Seems so easy for him to do, effortless. Doesn't seem to put a lot of strain on his body, yet you look up and he's hitting serves 120 miles an hour. As a young boy, Federer... First uh, came to love tennis through watching Boris Becker. And when Becker and Stefan Edberg had their great Wimbledon battles here over several years in the late 80s, early 90s, Federer came to, as he said, truly appreciate Edberg as well. Some people see Edberg in his game. Edberg was one of the all-time great volleyers. He was just a lot faster again than people thought. Gonna have to do some leg work to get legs as strong as that one. Mm -hmm. He's certainly got a better forehand. That was a liability for Edberg. Surprised to see Federer stay back as much as he has on the second serve already. Nerves still working around his body. The all-time comparison had to be in one of the, the London newspapers yesterday after Federer's defeat of Andy Roddick, and they used Federer and Borg in the same sentence. <laughs> How good does that feel for a young man, Federer. man from Switzerland? It's all the men's championship opens up on serve. Center court, Wimbledon, over 35,000 people have been on the grounds during the days of the fortnight and what has come to be known as Henman Hill through the years, even on this day when this is the, the one match of note that uh, Henman Hill is packed and I've got to believe that there are a fair number of Aussies out there. They certainly made that match a couple years ago after even Ezevich memorable. Never have I seen a crowd as energized as that 15 one when they played the Monday final. Philippoussis, who hasn't had the greatest rapport through the years in Australia, he's had never really got along much with Rafter on and off in Davis Cup. Now this week, Philippoussis has had quite a few conversations with Leighton Hewitt. And here it's gone, record supporting for the Bruce's, hoping that 15 all. Well, look at that. There are some Aussies there. <laughs> of course, you better believe that. Mountain Philippoussis. We just had to give Hemman a little shot in the gut there. What Philippoussis doesn't want to do is to beat Bat Trap like he did that previous point. He needs to continue to be aggressive, and I think you'll see him do that the rest of this match. He doesn't want to allow Federer to get him backpedaling. That's where he struggles with his movement. Guy. He's 6-1, though. He's able to take that Philippus's kick and put something on that backhand. Philippus needs to put more on that second serve against someone as good as Federer. Let's 
Well, Federer made an intriguing comment where he said Philippoussis goes for more on his serve than Roddick and has less margin for error. He said, especially on the second it's serve. No doubt the second serve. He's going to continue to need to do so. 40, 30. I mean, that is going for a lot on the second serve. When you're averaging 110 mm -hmm. miles per hour, most singles player on the men's side would be content with that <laughs> and for the first serve. And hit one as hard as 129. There's a classic example of what Federer did to Ronald. I mean, there's a serve. Okay, it's 128 miles per hour. Yes. He, he, it seems easy to him. To just, it, it doesn't intimidate him at all, that power. He gets it low. He takes his time. And his racket velocity as he goes through the ball is, is phenomenal. Tells you something about Federer because it's, it's like saying Advantage a baseball hitter would be such a great fastball hitter that even a Randy Johnson fastball wouldn't intimidate him. That's what's that, but the good part about this match is that was hit quite hard. But the good thing is you're going to see Philippus is you know stick with it. I mean he's got to. It's like strength to strength. Let's first. Service. I mean he has no other choice if he wants to beat Federer. It's going to have to be one of those virtuoso equivalent of a 20 strikeout performance in a baseball game. Basically like he did to Agassi. But it, he proved it can be done. Mm -hmm. First service. Okay, gonna boost this. So it's third ace in two service games, two all in the first set. Complete coverage of today's men's final. Log on to Wimbledon.msnbc.com. And you'll have real-time match scoring brought to you by British Airways. All at Wimbledon.msnbc.com. Fifteen miles. Hard to believe as you watch Federer play. When I mean, you saw him the other day against Roddick, and now that Ted, when he came into Wimbledon this year, his lifetime record here was four and four. <laughs> How could this yeah. guy, as good as he is, lose as many matches as he's won? Last year, Federer lost first round here to Mario Ancic, who's proven out to be a good young player. But Federer said last year, I never really felt I was playing well on grass. I never felt comfortable. And a year later, he stands here on Championship Sunday. He's blasted four aces by Philippoussis. Did you know that the average real estate commission is over $12,000? Why give that money away when you can do it yourself? The For Sale by Owner Kit gives you the confidence and knowledge to sell your home fast. Call the number on your screen to get the complete Canadian For Sale by... Mark Philippoussis says, we said there's some similarities to the Goran Ivanisevich saga here of two years ago and this is what Philippoussis is trying to achieve only the third unseated champion here if he can win this match well, the company he would join are truly awesome players on the on this surface Becker was 17 years old mm -hmm. when he won Wimbledon for the first time and looked comfortable out there from the first time he stepped on center court the other thing to remember for Goran and Philippoussis, they're unseated in the era of 32 seats. Certainly, injury has a great mm -hmm. deal for both of those players. Love 15. Philippoussis will get back in the top 20 as a result of this Wimbledon. And Federer himself is trying to do something. He's trying to become the first junior champion to then win the Wimbledon single since Edberg 12 years ago. If he wins this, or loses for that matter, he moves up to number three in the rankings. 
15 it's sad, old. though, to think of just even Izevich one more time that he won that title and he's never been able to play right. another match here. He's had injury issues, surgery, just can't get back here. That's sad. holding their breath to vote for that call. So was Philip Pusey. Look at that, the way he flicked that racket, used his wrist just why. I mean, people feel like he deserved it for that effort. I mean, the average human being cannot even contemplate trying a shot like that. You know, like Goron, Claimed two years ago, Philip Pusis, I'm sure, said the same 15. thing, John, that he can hit shots like that. He's not just a server. He's, he's got excellent ground strokes. And he likes a little bit of time there, and he's got, got the power, not just on the serve. Okay, Philip Pusis. And so Philip Pusis has started this match strong on serve, three all. Three games all. First set. And when you talk speed, as we look at the IBM fastest serves at Wimbledon. Philip Pousses in the top group. Well, that's not surprising. That's uh, some big hitters. I, the, the biggest surprise would be the guy in the bottom, mm -hmm. the left-handed Spaniard who serves in volleys. Did well here. Got to the round of 16 before he lost to Federer. Federer's all, uh, excuse me, Philip Pousses is also a lot better athlete than given credit for that long. big man. You can see how strong he is. He stands tall like a becker. Sticks out those pecs and intimidates opponents. <laughs> it's, it's learned that from you. Huh? Yeah, 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 I wish I had some. Thirty love. Inseparable is the word used to describe the relationship that Philippoussis has with his father, who is now cancer-free after being first diagnosed six years ago. <laughs> Greek father, Italian mother for Philip Roussis. His mom is vacationing right now, and she is not here, but his dad, who is now also his coach. He's been through a number of coaches, and he's settled with the old man when all is said and done. He's watched the Williams sisters succeed. Let Nick give it a shot. Nick told the other coaches what to do anyway, so he's tried the likes of Peter McNamara, who's a top 10 player, Pat Cash, worked with him for a while. And Nick would stick his nose in the middle of things, so this makes things a little easier for Mark. Less confusion about being told too many things. And then end, end up not listening to any of them. Federer holds, and we've had no breaks of serve in his first set. <laughs> yeah, they're back. And so is the amazing double chocolate Fudgio Blizzard treat. DQ soft serve blended with chocolate and Fudgio cookies. Do a double chocolate Fudgio Blizzard and DQ something different. Dr. Jacques Roga, the president of the IOC, sitting in the Royal Box today after the IOC meeting in Prague earlier this week that awarded the 2010 Winter Games to Vancouver, Whistler, British Columbia. And now Mark Philippoussis 
Building up new tennis balls at 3 4 first set. That's a risky maneuver. The first point of the game, hoping that ball goes wide. I mean, Philippoussis was there, could have attempted a volley. He chose to let it go and have to watch it bounce well inside the line. Piece of hit, but he hit it short on purpose. 15 off. Federer, watch, watch the first volley, which had some good depth. He sees Federer's over on that side of the court. He doesn't want to give him another chance, so he opens the racket and pulls his racket back a little bit so he can gently hit that ball to the open court. So it's a nice feel there. 30-15. Not expecting Back such a good return, swung at that volley too hard. That was a low percentage play for Philippoussis. Let's first service. Got the cell phone rule again. Fortunately, it didn't disturb Martin. That's his fourth ace. That was 138 miles Ooh. per hour. Oh, my oh my goodness. So his fastest during these championships. People are winning on right mm -hmm. now. Unable to have his serve dented so far by Federer. Full game four two. all first set. You know, he's, he's had four titles already. Round of 16 in the Australian, a bit of mediocre performance there. First round at the French. So this is uh, good timing for Federer to show he can play well in the big ones. He's starting to be a monkey on his back. I'm sure his coach Peter Lundgren is starting to worry about his job. See what happened to Tariq Benabile's with Roddick when he lost first round. As Philippus is getting off to a good start this game. Oh. 15 on. We're talking about Federer last year, John, and how he didn't feel comfortable here is Peter Lundgren who's been his coach for about a year said he panicked at Wimbledon there's Lundgren a former tour player well, he got here just before the tournament Ted. he played two tournaments instead of one so they, shifted, they shifted the schedule which is smart Peter made sure he got here a week ahead of time practiced here soaked up the environment made sure he'd be ready to go For Federer. He seems much better prepared mentally to do what it takes to go and win 15. seven matches at a Grand Slam. Try to keep his press commitments to a minimum. And try to keep him relaxed off the court and oh. pumped up on the court. That's a tricky thing to do. The second serve ace there. Close out the game for 5 4. Federal leads 5 games to 4. First set. A reliable supply of electricity at affordable prices. That's the goal of Ontario's energy plan. So we've frozen prices. We've started new water and wind power development. We're encouraging new sources of green energy through tax breaks. And we're rebating the PST on selected Energy Star qualified appliances. 
because conservation helps us all save energy, money, and a lot of other things as well. To find out more about Ontario's energy plan, call us or visit our website. It's all on the line at the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th. The best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit rogersattcup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. Time. Breakfast at Wimbledon, 25th year, live here on NBC. And immediately following our men's championship match on center court and the trophy presentation, we've, uh, we hope you'll stay with us. We've got a wonderful conversation with Pete Sampras, the seven-time Wimbledon champion. That will air immediately following the men's championship match. And then we'll have the ladies' doubles championship behind that. If you'll enjoy the very moving and emotional comments of Santos. 15 love. And on this day that was Pete's day so often here, I think seven times is the, the true weight of his absence this year is felt. Yeah, there's more guys that think they have a chance, including these two. Once again, where Philippus tries to kick it out wide to Federer, who's got that one-handed back, and he's so strong with that arm. And he can use that wrist to just come over it enough to have it bounce inside the baseline. As hard as Philippoussis hits that serve up the middle, you've got to respect that. So that opens the way for him to try to slice the ball out wide. It's incredibly difficult to break him when he's serving well. What do you think, John, about the Sampras connection with both of these men? That Philippoussis in 99 here in the quarters. Looked like he had Sampras a set and a break. Before he hurt his knee, had to leave. Well, if he had kept up that level, right. let's not forget, it's best of five. We're talking about Pete Sampras. But yes, he was playing phenomenally well, and it was sad that he had to retire in that match and have his first of three surgeries. And, for the and then two years ago, Roger Federer on this court ended Sampras' seven five championship five run here. <laughs> Five all first set coming up after Wimbledon today. NBC will bring you final round coverage of the U.S. Women's Open Championship. Hillary Lunky leading by a stroke going into that final round. Monica Sorenstam is three strokes back. So the U.S. Women's Open Championship after breakfast at Wimbledon today. 15 love. Gliding it. The next thing you know, you look up and look at where he puts his volley away from. He's a couple feet inside the service line. He's moving into the court. He just finds the angle so up. easily. It's so natural for him. Just like that serve. And after last year's baseline battle in the final, it's nice to see the mixture. Game better. Well, Federer's held his own big service games and we're at the end of the first set next. I can go east. I can take her to a nice restaurant. I can go west. <laughs> I can play in the sand until midnight. I can do absolutely nothing. Here, I can create a scene. I can have a snowball fight in July. 
can be just the two of us. I can show my family they're welcome here. I can tell our story. We can eat things we can't even pronounce. I can get them all! I can feast with my friends. I can stand where no one has stood before. I can do Europe next year! I can do anything. Philippoussis to this day receives injections of synthetic cartilage in his left knee. Every six months he gets this treatment so that he can continue to play because of this history. Well, that was the match right after Sampras, July of 99. It's been a nightmare. In March 2001, he was in a wheelchair for a couple months. He, he pulled a Mooster, though. I mean, he got out there and started hitting <laughs> serves. Remember that picture of Mooster <laughs> about a week after That's he had right. blown his knee out? He pulled a Mooster. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Yes. Who's, who's making a comeback, he claims now. Well, should we save the that world, for the French? Boy, next year? The world waits. Love <laughs> <laughs> 15. Start with the seniors tour. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things, though, that, that Nick Philippus, the dad, did for Mark. When he was in that wheelchair, they rigged up a device so that Philippus could at least hit tennis balls. But doctors told him he'd never play again. That's the shot that Federer used so effectively against Rock. And he can hold that ball. You've got to sort of lean one way or the other. And he just flicks it. See, there's a return that forces Philippus to hit up. He comes over the ball. It comes back down in plenty of time to land inside the court. And Philippus had served a double the first point. And now this is a tension time for him at Love 30. Let's first service. You don't get the sense it's going to be easy, as easy for Mark to blow four aces by Federer as he did some previous opponents. Yeah. It's a play that's extremely effective on clay, but very effective 15, on grass to go behind your opponent. He's working up ahead of steam to stop here on this grass court service can easily cause you to slide, slip. Federer can't get back for the passing shot there. hit some winners already in this set. Just shows you what nerves can do. What seems easy at other points in the first set. A lot tougher when you're trying to finish it off. And just like that, Philippoussis comes up with an ace. That's six for the first set. 40, 30. See, when you're tight, try to keep your feet moving. Don't get stuck there like Federer did on that previous return. So a very common result through the years for Mark Filipusis at Wimbledon, a tiebreak. And six games. It was a tiebreak that tie certainly break. helped Roger Federer to his win over Andy Roddick. Federer won the first set tiebreak there. Both slightly better than 500. And that's six, seven million a year uh, in baseball, isn't it? If you're a pitcher with that slightly <laughs> over 500 record. <laughs> so I like that from Philippoussis. Seeing that Federer stayed back fairly frequently on that second serve in a tiebreaker, it's going to be harder to hit that passing shot. Seems it's Federer that's blinked first. Philippus is four and one here in tie breaks, and Federer's three and oh. The only one Philippus has lost was to Agassi. One oh. Trying to guide 
like that a little bit. Didn't stay what? firm with that. Just enough for this to go long. Good in technique handbook, but it just floated on Mark. Let's fuss up. And even though this is just the first set, both these men know how important this tiebreak would be one. for both of set the tone in their semifinal matches. Federer, after surviving that first set, just dominated Roddick, and Philippoussis did the same to Grosjean. Let's first service. Pusis to pull this out because he's played a lot more tennis. He's been out there a lot longer. And if Federer wins this and relaxes a little, you may start to see him really get in the flow. including that forehand. But Federer is there, and just look how quickly he gets himself in position. He's got that excellent balance. 3-2, Federer. He's got this all lined up. He's just got that weight moving into the classic shot there. Still only, though, 3-2 in the tie break. Change ends, three all. Seven points wins the tie break. You must win by two. Another thing that you didn't see in the past, it was, quote, against the rules for you to stop on these changeovers. Jerry Armstrong, who's been in a couple other Wimbledon finals, letting these players do their thing. I think rightly so in this case. Mm -hmm. There is the veteran British umpire. The compassion you're starting to show for this position, by the way, is... And he's, is, and he's the guy really that defaulted, nice. too. In Australia? Yeah. Since I've come a yeah, long way. You have. <laughs> Four, three, Philippus. So the serves go back to Federer now. That's 4-3, Philippoussis. Nice job by Mark after losing that point. Long, impressive point by Federer to win two quick points on his serve. Now he sends the pressures back on Federer's shoulders. Pusis oh. half expected that previous shot to be called out. It wasn't. It was a very close call. He got a chance, had his forehand, and pulled it well wide. Uh, that ball did look like it clipped the line. Why? 
Moses was standing Federer. right on that sideline. Had this lined up. He knows he just missed it. And most of the center crowd spectators thought it was good. An inch wide. He knew it, though, when he hit it. He's going to come up with a couple big serves again now. He's down 4-5. Excellent first set. High quality tennis. Grass court tennis. Sir volley tennis, Ted. Let's. Second serve. That's the one to me that's so nice to see. But he, his elbow hurt on that serve. I mean, when's the last time you saw Philip Pusis hit a 77 mile mm. per hour second serve? He won't let that happen again. Oh! Ooh. Late call, but I believe a correct one. I think so too. He got tight there. Yeah, absolutely. Six four. It happens, Federer. believe me. You can see now all of a sudden Federer's got the chance. Yeah, it was well long. No question about that. Two set points for Federer. Hey. A one gone, but the other one on Six Federer's five. serve. Federer. Big serving Aussie. Could it be that one second serve that let him down? It could be the difference in this tie break. Oh. Oh. It is. That one double fault changed everything and Roger Federer has the first set. Wimbledon on Global is brought to you in part by HP. HP technology, services and people help make more things more possible. Today, HP technology is building efficient miracles helping access the web wirelessly in coffee houses and letting citizens talk to their government 24 hours a day. It's powering the engine of the world economy and making art timeless. For the world's great companies, thinkers, and doers, HP makes more things more possible. Big Brother 4, season premiere, CHA Tuesday. Time in the sun is fun for kids, but the sun may cause sunburn. Regular use of sunscreen over the years may reduce exposure to the sun's harmful rays. This sun fact was brought to you by Umbrel, the number one recommended sun protection by dermatologists. Truly flat beds in business class. British Airways. Our silly first set, chat, uh, first set stats show, John, what you said. I mean, look at the quality of tennis. Yeah, I mean, Philip Pusk, can you imagine serving at 80% and losing the set? I mean, both playing very cleanly out there. Federer with one. <laughs> I repeat, one unforced Seven error. Seven sets, Philip is to serve. He is breathing a sigh of relief. To, he saw Philip Pusk's toss in that double fold, get tight just at the wrong moment in that first set tiebreaker. Is better be careful right here. As Roddick learned. Roddick learned he had a couple break points. The first game of the second didn't break. Federer broke him, and that tilted the match heavily in Federer's favor. And he played some amazing tennis. Is, is quite simply the word. Unbelievable stuff. Alan Philippoussis was down two sets. 
15 all. In his quarterfinal with Alexander Pop, there was a rain delay and some of the great Aussies, John Newcomb, Neil Frazier, current Davis Cup coach John Fitzgerald all went in the locker room and, and they gave a, the Aussie pep talk to Philippoussis. Well, he had his ups and downs with Nuke over the years as well, so it's good to see those two back on track. John knew certainly what it took to win this title. And again, that angle. Normal people, I'm, I'm, actually, I take that back. Top tennis players can't hit these type of shots so easily. And again, Filippus is not doing enough with the volley. And he just finds the opening. It's just coming over the ball like he does and bringing it down. He makes it look easy, but I can assure you it's not. Is that a gift or is that acquired? It's a gift. I mean, you see a talent like this one, if you're lucky, one at once every 10 years. Excuse me. I mean, you almost sense that it was going to happen. That's incredible. I watched from this angle. We were in an excellent spot to see this shot. I said, he's going to do it again, 15, isn't he? 14. I'm watching this game thinking, I saw this match Friday. This is this is big. I mean, mm -hmm. It's a set, only a set in. It's a best of five set match, but he starts to get on a roll. Ball. This is the first break point of the match. Again, it's had an excellent illustration of Plus one, how talented he is, but two, how fast he is. I mean, he takes Philip, who's to serve there, makes it look easy right at his feet. Look how well prepared he is to hit that pass. He doesn't go for too much, though, but he does enough. It forces Philip to have to hit a great volley there. Look how fast there. He's in prep. He's prepared. He's got that racket back. His weight's moving into the ball. I mean, it's uh, out of a textbook. Right. And what we've seen in his best play here this week at Wimbledon on balance. And we say that about Agassi when he's right. You don't see Andre lunging. 15 love. Awkwardly reaching for shots. He, he takes littler steps. You know, mm -hmm. Andre's flexibility is not that great. This guy's 21 and mm -hmm. he's very fast. Right. It's a different speed. I guess he almost uses his strength in his upper body and his balance. Well, we welcome you live to Wimbledon Center Court. 25th year of breakfast at Wimbledon on NBC. 21 year old Roger Federer of Switzerland. He's taking the first set from Mark Philippoussis. Oh, he almost made that. Unbelievable. <laughs> that would have been unbelievable. He'll put a cape on him if he makes that. <laughs> Even there, he knows Philippoussis is coming in, so he finds a shot that, uh, again, is... Uh, for him, it seems normal. And for anyone else, it's just uh, next to impossible. 40-15. What Philippoussis has to do to win a point, then he just turns around, he's out-aced uh, Philippoussis 10-7 so far. And so Federer backs up his break. And he's trying to do in the championship what he did to Andy Roddick on Friday. And extinguish Federer hope two games early. Wimbledon.msnbc.com is Bud Collins' analysis of today's men's final. His look back at the fortnight and real-time match scoring brought to you by British Airways. All at Wimbledon.msnbc.com. Fifteen love.
Mike Federer has proven 15. to Philippoussis now that when he tries to kick that serve out wide to him and kick it away from Roger, that it's not going to work very well. I'd like to see him try to power that serve up the middle. The net is six inches lower there. And he can let loose more on that serve. Look at what Federer's done to that second serve. To the middle with it, it didn't. Well, it, 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 this guy is, is, is it's, it's like a dream again now. Here's 15, a ball, 15. might have been going out, but he's not going to take any chances as well as he's playing. Just full swinging backhand volley. Peter Lundgren's got to be feeling a lot more secure about things at the moment. Good for him. He's, he's done an excellent job at Fed. Yes. Worked with him about three That's years. Up. Bond, very important. Federer lost his longtime coach, his childhood coach, and the Swiss Davis Cup coach, Peter Carter, who was an Aussie by birth. How's that for court coverage from Federer? Federer senses it now. He just shot a quick glance up at his box. He, he looked Fifteen. also like he may have done something to his ankle ever so slightly. So we'll see if that affects him at all here, because this 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 set will be over for sure if he breaks. Philippus has go up two breaks. Philippus needs something to happen right now. The train is rolling out of the station. Six, three love. Federer up two breaks. Good night. Good morning. Truly flat beds in business class. British Airways. It's all on the line at the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th. The best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit rogersattcup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. Now one of the uh, most prominent tennis fans, he's been here really for the entire fortnight. Friends star Matthew Perry, a former Canadian junior, and he got on the court this morning with Mr. McEnroe. Oh, look at this. He's making make you run. Well, you know, I need, I need a little sweat. Wait till the, the set starts, though. No, can't do it. I'm under strict orders to say that we, he got a game. <laughs> or else I'll Thank never you. be invited to be in, on Friends. Just but then again, I'll never be invited anyway. Matthew Perry was a tremendous junior player in Canada. Let's he can now buy, he can now buy Canada. Tremendous, <laughs> tremendous junior player. He could send you the, send him the tape. Did you give the him tennis did, powerhouse? Did you give him theater tips after your That's Broadway right. appearance several he's weeks ago? He's doing an excellent job. He's performing sexual perversity in Chicago on the West End. Excellent cast. Hank Azaria is with him. Mimi Love Mimi. 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 Mini Driver. Mini. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God, that was hard. I guess because I found and out she was going out with some other tennis player, I stumbled over my words here. American Robbie Ginepri is, in fact. So uh, your your appearance on Broadway several weeks ago was? Thank you for bringing that up, Ted. The play, what I wrote, fantastic. You look here, see, this set appeared to be over. And now Federer, the first two Love points of this team. game, I thought. And we'll see if we'll find a replay at some point. 
And he may have done something to his ankle, a slight sprain. Let's see if it affects Federer as this match progresses. Philippoussis certainly hopes so. 15-30. This is in the last game. Let's see right here. Is he? Yeah, he did a little little job on that ankle. He won the point, won the game, but he, he grimaced a bit. It was right near us. He's hoping the adrenaline will just uh, mask any pain. Incredible flow right now. Is fair. Hey! Thirty all. Philippoussis's energy level is, is, is not there. You know, is it all the tennis he's played to get here, the nerves of the occasion? Whatever it is, he's got to find a way to get this crowd more pumped up in himself. But I keep thinking, John, it, it, Andy Roddick went through this Friday. 14, when he missed 13. the forehand on set point in the tie break and Philippoussis' double fault. It's almost like getting hit on the jaw once and having to take a standing eight. And the problem is by the time you recover, you can right. be down and out of the second set. And that's what's just, ha that's exactly what's happened. Okay, Federer. So there quickly from Love, 30, Federer holds for four Love. Just under one hour Federer on court. Rolex, the official timekeeper of the championships Wimbledon. And a time honored tradition here is how quickly things can change and it was about uh, seven or eight minutes for andy roddick on friday and it's been about the same for philippousis here <laughs> 15 love jerry look at him today john with all the work that he's put in philippousis to get back if you were going to be dr frankenstein and you're goal was to to create a tennis player that'd be about the body you'd want <laughs> pretty much any sport six four thirty oh, love. broad shoulder but Federer at six one or so is, has the quickness that Philippoussis doesn't have and he can get down a lot easier for those low balls here on these grass courts so his height to me is almost uh, better off at, at, at this event. I think that Sampras at 6-1 uh, was flexible enough, big enough, but not too big. This is... Forty love. Oh, he's got to get uh, mentally prepared, Philippoussis, for the overwhelming likelihood he's going to be down two sets. Mm -hmm. Climb that mountain one more time. Let's. First service. <laughs> game for the Pusis. So Philippusis at least gets a game back as he holds that long. Technology and HP people help BMW Williams run every race before the driver ever gets in the car. Summer's coming, so take note of the UV index, a guide that tells you the daily risk of exposure to sun. Check the UV index every day and always wear a minimum of SPF 15. This sun fact was brought to you by Umbrell, the number one recommended sun protection by dermatologists. Someone's falling in love. Someone's getting into big trouble. Someone's mouth has run off again. If you missed Train 48 this week, no worries. Catch the recap of all five episodes today at 2. Global's got Train 48. Time. Oh, a realization settling in here on center court that just over an hour into the match, it's Roger Federer taking command. Whoever wins today will add to this list. It really is, John, one of those cycles in men's tennis where we're featuring new names, new champions. 
Certainly with the depth there, it's tougher to get through the easy rounds and have enough left. So you, oh, more often than not, you're seeing guys sneak one, get a grand slam one at a time. So this will be the seventh different men's champion. But Ferrero, for example, Fifteen was up. due for a couple years. It didn't happen for him. Federer, they've been talking about. Look at that. Amazing. On serve today. But you know, John, it, I think Ferrero winning at the French and Federer here could be in similar positions that you would expect they will have many more chances, particularly on those surfaces. You better believe it. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's really impressive to watch from here how easy he makes it look. Forty love. Philip Bousis thinks he hit a good return. And then he has to watch that ball just drop over the net. Oh. <laughs> That'll deflate you in a hurry. Philip is just, he had a five minute letdown. Left. It's cost him a second to break. Is that like about as close as you can come in tennis to a perfect game? It's, it's pretty much. I mean, he, he didn't even play his best the first set. Now you're seeing what he's capable of. Forty-fifteen. You know, at his level, you almost have to call that shot an unforced error. But he's up 40 love, so he doesn't really care about that. He's, he's going to win this game anyway. Thirty. He must have seen the monitor out there, Ted, from the corner of his eyes that we have here in the booth, because he's just doubled the number of unforced errors. Two errors, it's still not enough to help Philippoussis. This 21-year-old Roger Federer, Federer leads five longtime coach, was killed, Peter Carter, in a, in a car accident last summer, and Federer fa floundered through the summer because of it. Emotionally affected. Is that in the combination, the, the, the combination of that and the disappointment over the nerves getting the best of him here? Just. It's taken him months and months to get over that. And still the nerves were there. And finally we see <laughs> why we expected him to win majors. Love 15. And it just shows you how good a serve you have to hit to get it by Federer. Ball clips the line. Some people scoffed when Federer said uh, earlier in the week that he didn't fear facing Andy Roddick's serve. And now I think uh, two matches later, people will not scoff any longer. Hustles up to decide to hit the ball on the outside 15, part of the ball. Watch him. He's, he's got the racket ready to go. Just uses the wrist, flicks just gently by, insultingly easily by Philippoussis there. Watch how he watched that ball until it made contact. Just techniques. Superb from Federer. Thirty-all. 
Filler Pusis wants to hold here, even though he's going to lose the set. He wants to start off this third set serving, trying to get some momentum here. It's a long climb back. Now he's been there. 40, 30. He was down two sets to one to Agassi and came back. He was down two sets to Pop in the quarters and came back. Probably better to do it against Federer. We'll serve for the second set when we come back. Today, HP technology is building efficient miracles, helping access the web wirelessly in coffee houses, and letting citizens talk to their government 24 hours a day. It's powering the engine of the world economy and making art timeless. For the world's great companies, thinkers, and doers, HP makes more things more possible. Live breakfast at Wimbledon, coming Time. to you from center court, where Roger Federer trying to become the first Swiss man to win a Grand Slam championship. And it does feel a little bit like Groundhog Day. <laughs> it was a couple days ago. An eerie similarity to his semifinal win over Andy Roddick. Serving here to take a two-set lead. Fifteen love. Philip Pusis is going to be disappointed the way he's returned so far. This has not been one of his better That's days in that department. He's yet in this match to have a break point. He's quite far behind the baseline. Return Federer serve makes you appreciate how good Federer's serve is, and he feels like he has to move that far back. I got the sense that Mark hesitated there, wondering if that forehand was going to drop in. You, you can't do that against That's someone enough. so good. Federer just puts the ball at his feet, and he's not in a good spot to hit it. See, Federer only 54%. The thing is, he's winning most of his second serve points as well. Filipusis has not been able to generate enough, put enough pressure on him to get anything going. 30-15. But you, you pointed out, John, and it's so true. Filipusis came out serving beautifully right away. He had that adrenaline hit. That's gone in the set. where we need to advocate the uh, use of an espresso machine on the tennis court to have a quick jolt of caffeine here. Get things going. He's just not going to win a lot of these rallies. As he's the Federer's fresher of the two. He's quicker of the two. He's the better striker of the ball. The two and 40, 15. Saying that Philippoussis has that ground show ability, but he's not going to win a lot of those points. And here it is two set points for Roger Federer. There we go. And Federer with his 14th base. He's outserved the Aussie. And Federer has a two set lead in the men's championship. That's six games to two. Federer leads two sets to one. Wimbledon on Global is brought to you in part by HP. HP Technology Services and People help make more things more possible. Bang and Olufsen.
Ericsson relies on HP technology to produce and distribute products that bring the world perfect sound. It's all on the line at the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th. The best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit rogersattcup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. The search for America's funniest person. Last comic standing. Global's got it Tuesday. For the big picture on investments, real estate, and consumer concerns, turn to MoneyWise with hosts Deirdre McMurdy and Peter Kent. For financial news in plain English, turn to MoneyWise. Global's got it. Weekdays. It's the player's paradise. Paradise Hotel. Wednesday at 9 on CH. Fun stuff to do all the time at Canada.com. Roger Federer said he didn't feel like he was playing well on grass last year. He's figured it out. He sure has. This is a... an extraordinary display again. Third set. Second straight match. He's lost two points when he's put his first serve in. That pretty much says it all. Again, so many winners, so few errors. 15. You know, John, that's often fun. It's the crowd, you can tell, trying to do their best now to get Philippoussis back in it. This is where tennis should steal an idea from basketball. The 22nd timeout. Let the coach come out of the court. There's 20 seconds where the coach come out and just say, get, get in the player's face and just say, listen, move your feet, play, whatever. Just to, to give them an right. idea to do something different. Mm -hmm. and I think it would add a lot of drama. Yeah, to I, I agree with you. I think absolutely should have. 14 love. The next best thing for Philippoussis is to hold easily here and like, get the crowd into this match. Acknowledge the crowd, perhaps. Pump them up. Well, he needs that. So Philippoussis with a hold at low. First Whatever, game, third set. Wherever he's drawn his inspiration from, Philippoussis during these championships, whether it's been from the, the Greek words written on the, the tape on his left hand, or, Seeing his father alongside wherever he needs to drop from it now he's, more than ever. He's come back from two sets of love down three times in his career. That's against Alexander Pop, Alex Kim, and Julian Varley. Uh, it's hardly Roger Federer the way he's playing. No disrespect to those players, but this would be a hundred times bigger comeback in this situation. The finals of Wimbledon. The idea is the right one. He, he actually 15 got too excited there, swung too hard. He didn't need to do that. He's got Federer where he wants him. The point's over. Dumps it in the net. It's like watching Agassi play his opponent. Like Federer is you know, close to the baseline. Mm -hmm. Philippoussis is five or six feet behind him. So again, that's not where he wants to be. Forty love. that first point it becomes easy for Federer. One off in the third set. I'll log on to Wimbledon.msnbc.com. A complete wrap-up of the championships, reflection and analysis from both Tracy Austin and Bud Collins at Wimbledon.msnbc.com. A little quiet there on what at least for one day has been renamed Mount Philippoussis.
so often he's, he's been able to get the ball on Phil Pusis' feet. Now he just hustles up. He's going to take that above the net, which makes that shot so much easier for him. Nothing Phil Pusis could do there. You better do something here, though, Ted, because he goes down a break here early in the third. It's good. Federer could run away with it. Good idea. Slow down. Make sure he hits a big first serve. Like that. For his 11th ace. 15-30. He won't get to the Wimbledon record, which Goran Ivanisevic set two years ago of aces, but still it's been a remarkable serving championship for Philippoussis. It's the size of a basketball to Federer. Mm -hmm. The amount of 13, time he 14. has compared to Philippoussis, who seems on edge. You see Philippoussis guesses he's going to go down the line. And Federer holds it a little longer and just hits the open court. And this is, <laughs> just say this is big for Philippoussis, who's putting it mildly down break point. Over. I thought that ball was long. Wow. From this view, we are about six rows up. I'd like to center court. I, that. I'm with you. I think you you have the Hawkeye here. This did take a bad bounce. That's obvious. No, no. Uh -huh. good, good overall. Good overall. Yep. Credit to Jerry Armstrong. God, not again. I said it. <laughs> Usually it does take a bad hop when it hit the line. It was quickly and efficiently done by Armstrong. What a huge decision for Philippoussis. Well, because it was called out by the Philippus. service linesman, so that, that overall had to take place, or the game would have been over. Mm -hmm. Pusis survives that game. It's all on the line at the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th. The best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit rogersattcup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. Charles Schwab Power Points. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples of Roger Federer's incredible play. Well, it's not just power that's gotten him in this position. It's his ability to come up with those angles, and spins, and he's got the power on top of everything else. Did I forget the quickness? Philippoussis <laughs> has it. He's got the same ability you see with other I don't know, great hitters in baseball, for example. It, it, he seems like he, he almost catches the ball in his racket, holds it there, and then decides where he's going to put it on the court to come up with those, some of those it's, extraordinary it's, angles. It's very rare that these the players give off that type of uh, ability to do virtually anything with any shot. Well, he is up two sets as Federer on serve in the third. 
You know what's unusual about that overrule, too, is that I thought that the uh, lines are being called by the uh, Cyclops. They're, as far as I know, 15. they go by those, by Cyclops. It's not supposed to be overruled. There's the machine there. And there is a, a judge sitting behind the machine who called that second serve out. I don't think the Cyclops machine went off. If somehow, some way, Philippusis were to come back and win this, I think is a lifetime supply of Fosters or something for Armstrong. <laughs> 30 love. Whatever Australian beer of his choice. There's the, there's the judge that called the second serve out. It was immediately overruled. Fifteen. Well, the second double fault for Federer. Ah, uh -huh. an Aussie voice cries out from the upper reaches of center court. Right. A little harder to get the tickets for the Aussies in the queue today. Forty fifteen. The Aussies are one of the few uh, people that actually hope for rain on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Wait in line all night and get a chance to see a final. Two years ago when Patrick Raptor played Ivanisevic on Monday, 14, this uh, felt like Melbourne West. Fantastic I energy, the best I'd ever experienced. Federer, I mean, I'm not sure why, he just stood there about a foot inside the baseline. Oh! That was one of the few times you've seen him lazy out there today. Cost him the point. gets the deuce. That was a long time coming. And you sense there's an opportunity for him right now. Deuce. This is the first deuce on Federer's serve in the match. Early third set. Philip he's up against someone who's just as comfortable dealing with the pace and who's got more to offer from that baseline. I'd still like to see him attack and put some pressure on Federer now. Come up with some passing shots when he gets to a deuce. Game there goes the game. Well, Federer winning the aces battle, 16 to 12. Well, coming up two in two games. weeks on NBC, the American Century Celebrity Golf Championship. That'll be Saturday, July 19th. Michael Jordan, John Elway, Pete Sampras. How about <laughs> He's that? on the Celebrity Golf Tour. And more, including John's good friend, Dennis Miller. All right. Luke Wilson, Carson Daly, all showing off their golf skills. I didn't preface Yvonne Lendl with that, <laughs> with that phrase. You notice I didn't do that. I appreciate that. I'll <laughs> be in two weeks here on NBC. to my uh, computer Love this morning 15. waking up first of all to find out that the Mets had won again I wanted you to know that that's hard to and secondly that we had a rookie Greg Biffle won last night here on NBC in the Pepsi 400 first NASCAR event of the year on NBC how did Dale Earnhardt Jr. do Philippusis had hesitated that first point. Wasn't sure if you know, the turn was going in and ended up missing the volley. Dino. Here he makes no mistake. Climbs up for an easy overhead. Not a quite a Pete Sampras uh, scissor kick, but got the job done.
after the men's championship trophy presentation. Stay with us a conversation with Pete Sampras, reflecting on missing this first Wimbledon in 15 years. On his new life. Some very moving and emotional comments from Pete. They'll be right after our championship presentation on Breakfast at Wimbledon. Pete's a father now, so he's got to be loving that part of his life. Let first service. At the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 7th. First point on Federer's serve at 2-3, third set. 15. That's the volley of Philippoussis needing a break. Or a great tie break, one or the other. Philippoussis has not had a break point in the match. Fifteen all. All-time great singers. Mm. My favorite band growing up. Robert Plant of Led Zeppelin. Have you played with him? No, I haven't played any tennis. With him. No, no, no. <laughs> if you, you don't mean sing. You haven't played crazy. No, I, no. I did. I wouldn't I would, go that, that far. That would be a nice dream. Has he ever sung to your guitar? <laughs> Come on. I appreciate you asking. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys, when they've been rock stars for a long time, they get a little hard of hearing. So I don't want them to go <laughs> deaf completely listening to me. <laughs> that would put them over the edge. 18th ace for Federer. If he's going to listen to someone play guitar, he'd probably prefer it to be Jimmy Page. Three games all. So three all in the third set of this men's championship. Amazing how the attraction of, the, of Wimbledon is. It brings out uh, folks either who live in Great Britain or people who travel here for this event from all walks of life. It really is a magical stadium, though. There's not a bad seat in the house. There is something about standing in center court an hour, two hours prior to a championship match before uh, spectators are allowed in. Just appreciate the intimacy of this. It's a very loose volley from Philip And he can ill afford mistakes like this. For him, as he can bounce back, and just toss down an ace. 30-15. Well, Federer's dropping significantly. He's making a couple errors already. What's wrong with him? It's interesting there. How could Philippoussis lose the second set 6-2 and not make an error? Unforced. I, I think he watched the ball go by him at net a few times. 40-15. He seems to have settled in a bit of a groove and is playing with some more desperation out there now, which is promising at least. Well, there's the answer. Look at Federer at 17 winners in the second set. Oh. 
Dan Filipousis. But Filipousis is holding his serve. For three now in the third. I can go east. I can take her to a nice restaurant. I can go west. <laughs> I can play in the sand until midnight. I can do absolutely nothing. Here, I can create a scene. I can have a snowball fight in July. It can be just the two of us. I can show my family they're welcome here. I can tell our story. We can eat things we can't even pronounce. I can get them all! I can feast with my friends. I can stand where no one has stood before. I can do yours next year! I can do anything here. Five years ago, these are the matches that don't get an awful lot of play on championship weekend here, but they often ring true later. So it did when teenager Roger Federer became the junior champion at Wimbledon. The last junior champ there, it is Stefan Edberg to, to win here. Pretty good company, Cash and Borg. Mark Filipousis also played for the junior championship here. He lost in the finals in 1994 to Scott right. Humphreys. Oh. Oh, it's too bad because Filipusa saw that coming. He's angry at himself there. 30 Just left. Still couldn't get that passing shot in the court. And here he sees Federer with a drop fly. It's not a particularly good one. Mark's there in plenty of time. What I would recommend to him is not take a big, long step like he did. He, he lost his balance. He's got to take an extra step, get himself better prepared That's to hit that passing point. shot. Are the legs heavy? Would be the question again. Has it, is it caught up to him? Forty love. Seeing the junior red. Right? Championship has been finished today. Florin Mergia, and I hope I'm pronouncing that, from Romania, winning the junior championship here. Game Federer. Very fine young American junior, Brian Baker, who's the runner up at the French, made the quarters in the junior championship here. I'd be reluctant to give up that racket yeah. that I was using that first couple sets. Federer seems to be looking for a new frame. It's more like a magic wand for him, isn't right. it? I suppose he figures he's got a couple more in that bag. Fifteen love. John, the dilemma Filipousis faces here is he's really making no dent on Federer's serve, which means it'll be either a, just an incredibly sloppy game from Federer or having to do it in well, tie breaks. He's hanging around, mm -hmm. and he's, right. he's holding on to his own serve. It's big. He seems to me more prepared on his own serve. He's winning his service games easier, and that's going to put some pressure on Federer. 40 love. He's done what he needed to do here in this third set. He's putting himself in a position to win this set. Again, it all could have been over had he not gotten that overall down break point on that set, that serve. There is a hold at love. So we move on to the third set. 5-4, Philippousis. It's all on the line at the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th. The best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, 
and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit RogersATTCup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. HP technology and HP people help BMW Williams run every race before the driver ever gets in the car. Roger Federer. It's on. Two sets up on Mark Philippoussis. A first set tiebreak that was really decided by a double fault for Philippoussis. An easy second set for Federer. And in this unique Wimbledon setting where Families sit in the same box. Coaches sit right in front of each other. How did they decide who gets the front row seats? Do you know? Uh, well, there's Nick Philippoussis in the back and Peter Lundgren in the front. The two coaches. I don't know. Flip probably, a coin? Probably flip a coin. 15 love. And it's what, what makes yesterday's match so unique here in that the Williams family has the entire box. No such problems. <laughs> That's true. That's when you even get to throw agents in there. A moment in the sun. They continue to be amazed by Federer in that talk about the serves of Roddick, the serves of Philippoussis, and here's Federer going through his service games with no problem. He's got so much to back it up with, too. The speed, the volley, the round strokes. Ah! Oh, good and here's the second over. Yep. Both players knew that was a good overall. And it's the 19th ace for Federer. I think, John, that number we just saw points up. What you mentioned, that Federer winning so many points on his second serve, two-thirds of them. That's where it shows what he's backing up that serve. And he's stayed back on a number of those. Okay, Federer. So it's five all as we march toward what seems to be an inevitable tie break. Five games old. See, Philippoussis' first serve percentage is still remained high mm -hmm. throughout this match. His play has been, you'd have to say he's played a reasonable yes. match, not a great one. But if you told Philippoussis nearly three sets in, he was serving 70%, don't you think he's had more than 14 aces? But I think having watched Federer play Roddick, he realizes how well he handles that serve. He wasn't going to get as many aces. Good guess there from Philippoussis. The crowd, are, to me, has been unusually subdued in this match. Getting behind Philippoussis there, he senses that Federer's going to go see him move early. Sense Federer's going to go up the line. Excellent drop volley there. Philippoussis, who loves surfing so much now, says it helps him relax, needs to be relaxed up there at net. You see how tough it's been for him. So far in this match, stay relaxed. That, hurt, that hurts why. the percentages yep. too. That's why. So he's on. tried to serve and it hasn't worked for him. Kick it out to the Federer backhand. He's handled it all day. Philippoussis has to take care of business in this game to be sure he can get to a tie break. And it's 15-30. Oh.
15 -14. A double fault cost him the first set, and now a double fault gives Federer two break points. Pusis has only served four doubles in a match. Boy, the timing in the couple has been awful. 30, 40. It's pressure. To come up with something extra against someone who's playing so well. Oh, he got lucky yes, there. He did. Federer guessed right, had plenty of time. Yes, Philippoussis was desperately scrambling here. Oh no, he's right where I didn't think he was yep. going to be. And we've seen how many of those shots be winners for him in two matches. Well, that is the first time Federer has really tightened up. He could have been serving for the match. Watch that ball right into those strings. Made no mistake. Huge if Philippoussis can slip out of this game and hold. Federer will not let him off the hook that easily. Again, what you saw against Roddick is blocking the return back. And see how he stops the racket frame because he wants to make sure it drops inside the baseline. Uses a little top spin. There's another winner from Federer. The wand again. The pace from Philippoussis. Advantage Philippoussis. Does the Aussie. A couple of big serves when he needed them. And Federer trying to force this third set to a tiebreak. At the 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup, August 9th through the 17th, the best of the best in women's tennis, including Jennifer Capriati, Kim Kleisters, and world number one Serena Williams return to Toronto at York University to battle for the prestigious title. To buy your tickets, call 800-398-8761 or visit rogersattcup.com. The 2003 Rogers AT&T Cup. It's all on the line. It was a spectacular morning in London. In fact, uh, the sun made a cameo appearance today. <laughs> it's trying, in fact, to break its way through the, the cloud cover now on center court. And Mark Velopoussis walked the wire there, got to the other side, now hopes he can put some pressure on this service game from Federer. See Phil Pussy's try that when it gets a 30 all in this game if he can make it that far. But he would have liked a little more depth on that return, but still. The 
so athletic, Federer. A well-deserved round of applause for these two players. See Mark hustling, he's scrambling, trying to make something happen. Federer just too good again. 40 love. Get ready for a third set tiebreak. Ace number 20. 20 aces for Federer. Six more than the big serving Philippoussis. Championship on the line for Roger Federer in this third set tiebreak. First serve to Philippoussis. Six games old, third set tiebreak. to do there to take it in the air away for it to hop and that cost him the Federer. point. Look at for once again handling a big first serve. See it's tough to get that weight stopped. He's a big man. 6'4", 220. Federer with the first point. Oh. Philippoussis gets it right back. Federer made sure there. Didn't take any chances. Let that return go. It might have floated long, but the way he can hit shots, Federer. why even bother taking the chance? Spins it away from Philippoussis. A little. He just made that decision, uh, one that he didn't have to think about because he couldn't get himself in position to hit it. 3 1. It's, it's a bit of a miss hit. I'm sure that Mark knew that ball was going to drop in. Oh. But even that was a heavy 130 mile an hour first serve, and it didn't face Federer. Whole lot seems to. Oh. That's going to go long. That's Federer. Golden chance now. 4 1. Two sets up and two one. serves to come. Things certainly looking grim for Philippoussis now. Switch ends with Roger Federer two points from the championship. A major Swiss journalist wrote last year about Federer that we haven't seen him put his heart down there on the court. Boy, he's played, especially against Roddick, Megan Sampras. Or against Roddick and against Philippoussis. Thank you. It was so dominant. He's made it look ridiculously easy. Oh. 
6-1, Federer. And now all of the urgings of the Aussies outside on back Philippoussis and the hopes of the center court crowd are not enough. Federer with a pocket full of championship points. Split second for both those players, particularly poor Mark Philippoussis now. Still four match points he's got to save. At least that first one clipped the top of the tape. something to think about here. He can just sneak out this Six next three. point. Federer. Federer certainly adrenaline and heart rate will come up in a big way. Third match point. This time Federer serving. off the throne. Roger Federer goes to his knees this time as a Wimbledon champion. Switzerland will say they can't see his heart now. A first round loser here last year. His coach said he panicked. He felt the pressure. And a year later, he wins Wimbledon losing one set. Is what you call a combination of exhilaration and relief. Right there, finding Federer. But how well deserved to win his first Wimbledon title. Amazing semifinal and final performances. And when you think, John, the quality of tennis that this man played in the semis and the finals, two matches combined with just 21 unforced errors, it's so Sampras like. And it does make you believe that this is not a one and done for no, Roger Federer at all. I mean, this could be uh, open the door for many, many more and other majors, not just Wimbledon. So Switzerland has a Grand Slam champion. It's first a former tour player from Sweden, Peter Lundgren, the victorious coach. The Federer family is in the house somewhere, we know. People told him, he said, it was going to happen too quickly after he beat Sampras here two years ago. Well, it's finally happened for him, and he's only 21. Wimbledon champion Roger Federer. His emotions bared on center court. Championship presentation next. <laughs> 